Dread Mechanic here, and today I would like to show you how to build a self-contained airlock system. This system can be used on ships, stations or buildings, and in this tutorial we will be designing it around a small greenhouse. To build our airlock, we will need to create a small pressurised space using a pair of doors and an air vent. We will also need an oxygen tank for temporary O2 storage. To program the airlock, we will need a pair of timer blocks, an event controller, and a light. And to activate the airlock, we will also need three button panels. So to start with, we need to build a pressurised area around an empty one block space. This can be any configuration you like, as long as you have an empty side for each door, and one for the air vent. The first thing we will do is place the air vent facing into our airlock. In this example, I have placed it into the floor. Next, we will attach our oxygen tank to the air vent. The air vent has multiple conveyor ports, so you can position the oxygen tank in a variety of configurations depending on your design. And we will also need to make it isolated from our O2 production, so it doesn't end up as general O2 storage. Then we will place the two doors on the outside edges of our one block space. We will name them interior door and exterior door. Then we can close both doors to check that the area is actually airtight. And now we need to build our three button panels. One will go outside the airlock, one will go inside the airlock, and one will go inside our greenhouse. This way we will be able to operate the airlock from any position and other players won't be able to lock us in or out by mistake. Now that we have all the parts of our airlock in place, we need to program it. For this, we will need our timers, event controller, and light. We can build these blocks in large grid, however they can take up quite a lot of space at that scale. As an alternative, we can build them onto a subgrid and condense the space we use down to one large grid block instead of four. For this, we will place a hinge block and remove the hinge part from it. Then we will go into the control panel and press the add small hinge button. Now we can build our control blocks in small grid and use less than a quarter of the space that we would have in large grid. The first block we will place will be the event controller, which we will name airlock. Then we can place our two timers on either side and name them airlock pressurize and airlock depressurize. And finally, we can build a light which we will use as the switch for this system and name it airlock light. Now we have all of our programming blocks in place, we can go to our control panel and set everything up. The next thing we will do is set up our two timers, so we will go to the depressurize timer and click on the setup actions button. First we will select our interior door and set it to close. Then we will select our air vent and set it to depressurize on. Next we will select our oxygen tank and set it to turn on. And finally, as a little visual indicator, we will select our airlock light and set it to change to cyan. Then we can go to our pressurized timer and do something very similar. The first action we will select will be our exterior door and we will set it to close. Then we will select our air vent and set it to depressurize off. Next we will select our oxygen tank and again set it to turn on. And finally we will select our airlock light and once again set it to change to cyan. Then we can go to our airlock vent and click on the setup actions button. The air vent can function much like a sensor with two separate states for when the space is pressurized or depressurized. So on the first page we will set our exterior door to turn off in slot 1 and turn on in slot 2. Then on page 2, we will set our exterior door to open in slot 2. On page 3, we will set our interior door to turn on in slot 1 and turn off in slot 2. Then on page 4, we will set our interior door to open in slot 1. And in slot 2 of page 4, we will also set our oxygen tank to turn off. This will prevent our O2 tank from filling up once the airlock has been depressurized. And then finally, on page 5, we will set our airlock light to change to green when it is pressurized, and to change to orange when it is depressurized. And now we have all of those commands in place, we can set up our switch. So we will go to our airlock event controller, and set the event to block switched on off. 
we will select our airlock light from the available blocks list. Then we can click on the select actions button and set up our timers. Now we can either just set our timers to trigger in each slot, but this has the potential for them to be triggered when we don't want them to. Or we can set them up to turn on and off, as well as being triggered to prevent any conflicts. So on page one, we will set our depressurized timer to turn on in slot one and turn off in slot two. Then on page two, we will set that timer to trigger in slot one. On page three, we can set our pressurized timer to turn off in slot one and turn on in slot two. Then on page four, we can set that timer to trigger in slot two. And now that we have our airlock controls programmed down to a single action, we can set up our button panels. So all we need to do is go to the action menu for each of our buttons and select the block on off action for our airlock light. We should now be able to open and close our airlock whether we are inside it or outside of it. And that has been my tutorial on how to build a self-contained airlock system. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.